recording. Okay. There we are. I'd like to welcome today my special guest, Billy West, a great voiceover actor. Thank you. Thank Hi you. there. Thanks for being with me today. Thank you very much. Oh, it's a real pleasure. Um, you know, I, I admit I know more about acting than voiceover work. What made you choose to do, or, you know, did you fall into it? How did you pick it? Um, it's just, I didn't really choose it. It chose me, you know, there's this force that comes along one day. And, uh, if you ignore it, you don't go where it's trying to take you. And right out of the blue, it was like, you know, come on, you're going, you know, <laughs> Is, is that because of some of your early work with Howard Stern? Um, no, this was when I was a little kid. Oh. Yeah, I got this, these inklings when I was a little kid. And, and it's like, to tell you the truth, stuff that I was doing 45, 50 years ago is the same stuff that I do today. You're just lucky people pay you for it. Yes, <laughs> but it was a long road. <laughs> Oh yeah, I hear you. I hear you. I never thought I would be a vendor after everything I've done in my life. So I understand. Yeah. Um, Howard Stern, how did you end up working with him? I mean, all I know, he was a shop, was a jock at the time. Yeah, I worked in Boston in radio. That's where I first did radio. Um, that was in 1979 or so. And I went as far as you could go uh in that city you know i just i felt like there was more for me to do so um the station that i was at arranged to have me come by and talk to howard and see if he could use me for his show you know and so i wasn't sure of anything i just went there and you know we just screwed around on the air and a few other things and so i i up and left oh, you know wow. for and and you enjoyed that and you continued to do it yes it was scary i mean because um new york was huge it was massive and um and i wasn't sure how i'd be received by people everybody in boston knew who i was but nobody in new york knew who i was wow yeah that's a big scary step i understand yeah um you play a lot of characters what or who would you like to play? Why? I mean, if, if, if I could just say it done, who would it be? Um, gosh, I don't, I don't know. I get so many varied requests to play different characters and they're all, you know, a challenge in their own way and everything. Um, but I've never like sat there and said, who do I want to play? Mm -hmm. It's always, I was, um, an objective fulfillment machine. <laughs> well, that's very true. Like, um, you have so many voices and so many wonderful things. Um, is there one of them you find more endearing or more closer to your heart than another? Um, well, to me, it's all about, you know, voice acting. And, you know, you don't, you don't have anything else to act with except voice box and your mouth that's it you can't do you have to convey emotion you have to con convey all kinds of things that people can't see on your body or your face um it's a challenge i mean it's it's a specialty yeah. i know everybody kind of thinks they can do it but um to stay employed for decades you got to be ready for anything yeah well i, I know a lot of Regular actors think that they can do it, but I yeah. don't find them as interesting as, you know, I've, I've talked to um, John DiMaggio and you before, mm -hmm. we and you just, the amount of range and creativity you guys have when it comes to a voice compared to them, it's just so different. I, I don't always think they should be part of it unless they've got some really, you know, like Samuel L. Jackson voice that makes you go. Yeah. Oh, well, a lot of them, a lot of them don't get it. They were kind of pulled into it because of their celebrity. And sometimes the name of the game on the other side of the creative end is, uh, you know, he'll put asses in the seats or people will watch it because of him. And meanwhile, 
these projects are supposed to be evergreens. That's how I treat every single thing that I do as an evergreen. In other words, it'll, it'll knock people's heads off today and 50 years from now, it'll knock people's heads off. When these people aren't famous anymore, their voices are just going to fall into an anemic soup, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just another guy named Joe. My, you know, sometimes I hear voices in movies that are celebrities and I go, why don't they just hire my plumber? He sounds exactly like that. Oh. Yeah. So, um, it's sort of I don't like know. Mel Blanc. I mean, he just had such a reign to the depth that a lot of the newer actors and some of the newer voice guys don't seem to have like you and John seem to have a much deeper sense of the, like I, I get the character where I don't with them. Does that make sense to you? Well, I, all the characters that I've ever done, I, I don't know if I intentionally wanted them to sound honest. I just did what came easy to me, which, which was to get information about the character, look at the drawings and uh, get a little history on them. And, you know, and every character has a Bible that the writers come up with that things you can expect from this character all the time, unless they direct you otherwise. But, you know, I, I wanted these characters to be like somebody you could actually know in real life. You know, somebody you could sit and sit down and talk with. Oh. Um, and, and that's the, the line that I, I talk about, you know? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. No, I understand. I mean, watching the fans come up and interact, it's very, it's rewarding to see that, you know, cause sometimes we have guests and the actors are like, Bleh. you know, they don't even ask, just give me the money. And you guys really talk and, and you can tell that the fans love the different characters you've brought to life for them. You know? Um, yeah, they got to ring true to people. Otherwise they'll have no interest in them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm taking you for a walk around my house because my phone will die if I don't plug it into something. So we're getting a little uh, look at all the ceiling view. <laughs> yeah. Um, this is a catacombs. If and, you uh, saw my apartment, we'd be doing the same thing. Only it'd be like, okay, walk here, turn, walk here. <laughs> ah. Yeah, I don't want to get connect disconnected. So I'm going to plug this in over here. Okay. There we go. And once okay. again, connected. Yay. <laughs> Yay. Well, I, I know that outside of doing voice work for television and some movies, you do commercials. That's yes. one of my favorite. How, um, how did that come about? Or was it just a natural, it went from one to another and they're both the same? Maybe I don't uh, understand. Um, the thing about that character is that Originally, they were being performed by John Lovitz and John Goodman. He was the yellow M&M, John Goodman. And they had a certain chemistry, and it was interesting uh, to pay attention to that. And I basically, the voice I did was just sort of a wise guy, me, you know, my own regular voice. I was kind of a wise guy. <laughs> Greatest in the world, and he's the best chocolate, and everybody loves me. Yeah, it's a great character. I love, I mean, if I had to pick one of them, Red would be it. Because he's just yeah. so personable, you know? The others are just kind of there. Which yeah. probably isn't fair, but... Well, J.K. Simmons, um, that super fine actor we have, um, does the yellow M&M. Mm. And, um, you know, he won an Oscar for Whiplash and... He's, uh, he's one of my heroes, you know, because I see him in everything. And even, like, the week after he won an Oscar, he came to an m and session. Oh, wow. That's, that's awesome. That's being a journeyman. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. well, I, I get into that. business so I could work, not to quit after I won an Oscar. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, just because you won an Oscar, what are you going to do to pay the mortgage the next day, you know? I know. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, I love I love that. Futurama. We cannot not ask you about Futurama. 
How many characters do you play on Futurama? Um, I do uh, Philip J. Fry, 25-year-old pizza delivery boy. Um, and I do the professor, the old professor. He's like, I don't want to live on this planet anymore. <laughs> and, uh, and then there's a crustacean doctor. He's kind of like a lobster or a crab or, you know, I don't know. Take your pick. But he, um, but he has all this, he has all this meat hanging off his face. And I thought he'd be impaired a little bit in his speech. And I, and I hearkened back to the old vaudevillian performers that I grew up listening to, like George Jessel and Lou Jacoby. And they always had this kind of thing going on. You know, it was a Yiddish thing. Yeah. It was a Yiddish theater or whatever. You know the definition of a smart ass? A fellow that can sit on an ice cream cone and tell you what flavor it is. <laughs> but about well, it, it, it's awesome because it really shows in Futurama that it has such a great, great following. Such yeah. one. You know, it's, it's really, it's very heartwarming to see you at an event and these fans coming up and just, oh, I love this or, oh, I love doing that. So, yeah, it's oh, really I, great. I get great enjoyment about that. I appreciate it so much that people are actually into it. And, uh, and I've raised a couple generations at this point because I've got, there are kids like that are seven that know who I am. And there's okay. old geezers that are in their seventies that know who I am. Which is awesome. It is. So during COVID, you are working then? I mean, we talked a little bit before we got on, but yeah, you're working. Is there anything you can tell us about that you're working on? Um, I'm still doing uh, Matt Groening's show, Disenchantment, and that's on Netflix. Okay. Uh, I have two projects that have not been announced. I guess one of them is going to be announced Saturday or they're going to debut real soon. So, so keep your eye out. <laughs> yeah, and um, let's see. I'm still doing the M&M's commercials. And, uh, you know, there's a couple other things that are in the works. They're uh, coming back. Oh, well, that's couple. So we'll, we'll keep an eye out for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that's good. That's, that's wonderful. I'm glad that you're working. I've talked to so many actors that are just, they don't know what to do. And then I've talked to people like you who've uh, found an outlet and still working. That's great. So, um, you know, it's just like, I cared about all this stuff when nobody else gave a damn about it. Mm -hmm. You know, when in school, I was kind of born to do these kind of things, but nobody wanted to hear from me. Nobody wanted, I, I was, you know, if I opened my mouth, I was disrupting things. And if I went to go play a piano, somebody would slam the lid. You know, it's like, it wasn't very, it, I don't know, nothing artistic was going on that people cared about. So if you were one of those people that was on your way to actually having a career, um, it was a gauntlet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very different than today. What do you think, uh, you are better than us? You know, <laughs> they get all threatened and everything. Oh, yeah. I, I didn't know you were involved in music. Do you have more music coming up? Um, I have, um, let's see. I always played in bands when I was younger. I made a living doing that, playing cover tunes and stuff. Then I was in a band that did original stuff for a while. And um, then, uh, let's see. I was in a Beach Boys band that I put together because I loved Brian Wilson. And eventually i got to play with brian wilson i played in his band uh, when he was promoting the out the uh the tv series i wasn't made for these times actually it was a movie, mm -hmm. it was a movie. i wasn't made for these times and i got to play with one of my my greatest heroes yeah and uh that was so exciting mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that's that's awesome. I mean, when you can meet people like that, that's wonderful. Well, I used to dream about those guys when I was like, you know, 17, 18 years old. I said, how on earth does somebody write those kind of songs? I said, somebody, please explain it to me. Because I, I had an ear and I could hear lots more stuff than I could play. Mm -hmm. I had to catch up with myself, but uh, that was an honor of a lifetime.
Yeah. You know? Oh yeah. No, I I understand. I've been able to meet a few of my heroes. It always makes it worth the job. You know. Well, they sometimes say don't meet your idol or don't meet your hero because it could go absolutely wrong. You know That's what I mean? True. It, That's happened, but it you know. Could be abject failure but i met my heroes most of them i met jackson beck voice artist uh from the 30s from radio um i met uh, stan freeberg i worked with him I i've worked with so many of my heroes um gosh um I'm trying to think i uh oh god i i'm trying to remember which heroes of mine that I actually worked with and which ones that I met. Um, let's see. Uh, Sid Caesar. When I was a little kid, my mother used to let me stay up and watch your show shows back in mm -hmm. the 1950s. And uh, he was the first televised image I think I ever watched. And, uh, and that guy just fractured me molecularly i was disassembled by watching him and listening to him and all his voices and characters and accents and just his whole style of comedy same with jonathan winters i met and worked with both of them wow he's somebody yeah. i would have loved to have met he just seemed like he was interesting never oh, done those guys were on another planet when i think of what was going on in those those days there was nothing you know nothing to get excited about i mean except for like really good music and a, and a few tv shows and hosts but but these guys used to decimate a tv studio yeah and uh i don't know uh, when i met him i was just it was like maestro you know and i said that about one of my musical heroes jeff beck who i got to meet mm -hmm. i followed his, i followed his career since i was 16 and then when i met him he knew who i was I, I was floored. I couldn't believe it. He, oh, that's uh, awesome. we, yeah, we get that Ren and Stimpy in the UK, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I just said, oh my God, how crazy. Yeah. Les I, Paul I, and that, you know. I, I oh was fortunate. I got to meet a bunch of jazz people that I really, you know, I got to meet Louis Armstrong and at the time I was like, I couldn't talk. I was so excited. Oh, so course. I understand, you know. Of course. Yeah. And I mean, it was in such a professional, you know, way that I should have been more composed. And I'm just like, and he goes, it's all right. I understand. I'm like, thank you. No, <laughs> no you, it's just what happens to us when we meet an otherworldly being. Yeah. You know, how, you know, where did you come from? How did you, how did you get to this? Ideas? Yeah. Yeah you create these things and and you're spellbound really yeah oh yeah definitely it it makes the day better when they're great and when they're not so great it makes you reevaluate why you liked them you know well i have given people breaks just because everybody gets old that's you know, true they're not at the height of their powers that they once were that's true i i i'll have to rethink that <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, is there anything else you'd like to tell us about, or can I call it a wrap? Um, let's see. Um, I have a um, Twitter, uh, the Billy West. We'll you know, put it below on the okay, channel. At the Billy West. Okay. And um, let's see what else. Um, and you have a website too, I believe. Yeah, I have. Um, I have a website, which is billywest.com. There isn't much new stuff on there, but, um, you but know. you've been working, unlike the rest of us. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, I, I think uh, I will be putting up a lot of stuff real soon, though, because I'm getting bulletins for this and that, and, and people will be pretty happy. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, well, then we will definitely have the links below for people to go check it out. Cool. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Sure thing. And we're going to say goodbye. <laughs> Once I find the stop button.